density of states is a, a concept which describes the number of allowed states within some energy range uh, DE. So if the density of states described as GE will be some basically a number of number of number of states within DE. It is very useful for um, describing the transport properties in the materials, especially in nanostructures, where you can use it to to obtain the the concentration of charge carriers as the integral up to a Fermi level of this density of states, taking into account the Fermi Dirac distribution, where then you can use this um, carrier density together with um, the charge of, of the electrons and its drift velocity to calculate the to calculate the current density. Before we um, before we describe the the process how to obtain the density of states, let's summarize um, another useful concept. Um, the dispersion relation, that is the ratio, the relationship between the energy and the momentum of the particle, so called this EK EK relation. If we use uh, again, we will be using only a free particle model here. And in this case, the energy is described as a sum of these three components, EX, EY and EZ, obtained from, um, obtained from um, independent, uh, solving independently three, sh three Schrodinger equations in each of these three coordinates. And then the solution would be h bar square over 2m times kx squared plus ky squared plus kz squared. So what we did in the free particle model. And um, this allows you to obtain this now, the value of e as a function of uh, momentum okay, in, three, uh, in three directions. So this was a three-dimensional case. Now, if we're talking about a two-dimensional case, this means one of the dimensions is, um, is quantized and uh, the dispersion relation is then modified. So the so this remains the same, but now the solutions will be slightly different. So each bar square over 2m, you will have, let's say the kz is quantized, the z direction is quantized. Plus ky squared, all these bits. Plus, um, unknown one and z so the, the principal quantum number pi squared over oz squared so you will have a um, sort of a, a, a free particle solution for the uh, x and y momentum coordinates and you will have the quantized values in the for the z coordinate and then obviously in one dimensional case You will have also ex plus ey plus ez h bar square over 2m x squared and then the two states will be quantized in the y and z direction and, and y square y square over y squared plus and z squared y squared over z squared And in the zero dimension, they are quantized, and you will have the solution that we got for the particle in the box. And x squared, x squared plus y squared, o y squared plus and z squared, o z squared. Now let's consider the this density of states, and we will be working in this uh, in the k space so in the space of this uh, the momentum um, 
from um, so the the approach the approach we are taking if we, if we have a macroscopic sample then we will have um, the size of the sample again we use the same units like lx ly and lz so this like a primary dimension so for macroscopic sample so those values are quite big and let's uh let's let's use that one and you can use exactly the same approach what we did for a particle in the box just this case the part the the box is really large and we'll have lots of these uh, states and uh, uh, each state will occupy um, a small volume in this uh, in the in the momentum space now we have this um, let's say kx ky kz and there will be lots of lots of states um, going all the way there and uh, for example in the k kx um, we, we know how it um, how it depends right so kx lx will be pi and x just from just from the solution you will have the same ky y equals pi and y and so on and the same for lz this means that in the in in the small cube in the k in the k space this the volume volume occupied by one state is uh, pi cubed over lx ly lz or it's pi cubed over over the volume of that um, of the sample volume of the material so the number of states available for a given um, magnitude of of the vector the k vector can be found by using um, um, a trick so now we we in this k in the k space And there are like lots of lots of these states everywhere, equidistantly spaced, and we construct like a we construct a spherical shell, where in the um, so the radius the radius of this shell will be k uh, this is the, the magnitude of the vector, and the thickness of the shell is uh, decay. So the volume then of the spherical shell by definition is 4 pi k square dk and then we now we need to calculate what would be the number of states within this spherical shell so g of k dk this is uh, equals the volume the volume of shell divided by volume per one state so g g of k dk is uh, 4 pi k square dk divided by pi cubed over v Now we can simplify uh, 4 pi k squared uh, v over pi cubed and decay. In this in this um, part of the course, we 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 do not consider the the, the spin states, but in principle. The, um, the electron has um, another quantum number, so it has a spin state up or down, and uh, each state can, in principle, hold two electrons, right? So each state, two electrons. Later in the course, we'll be, we'll be treating it more, more rigorously with uh, including the spin. So now our G of K dK is uh, 8 pi k squared v over pi cubed 
in decay. Right, this factor of two came from spin. But this naive um, uh, um, estimation is not entirely correct because um, now if you consider we have this um, have this sphere of states and um, basically when we um, when we are counting the wave function there will be sometimes a difference only by the number so because our nx and y and and z were allowed to be po both positive and negative but when you calculate the wave function you will get the same result so if the wave function is different only by sign they are indistinguishable so we should only count those values bigger than zero to avoid uh, multiply counting the same quantum state so we need to divide by eight so we, we take only one of the octants of this um, of this sphere so the the final the final result will be without this factor eight and if we then simplify for pi you have k square v over pi square dk so this result is nice but the density of state is expressed in terms of um, momentum but we want to know it in terms of energy. So how to do this? We can use a dispersion relation, and um, let's uh, let's keep like working in a spherical coordinate. So we have this k square, and the spherical coordinates is k x squared plus k y squared plus k z k z squared, and uh, so the dispersion relation will be then. E is h bar square k squared over two m. This is a free particle. This is a free particle model. So basically, a parabolas, a parabolic dispersion uh, relation. You have some momentum here. This is the energy. And uh, then we can express k is two m e over h bar squared. All right. So there is a uh, k square missing here so now we can do some evaluation there take let's take the derivative of this one we will have 2k dk equals uh, 2m de over h bar squared so then dk is uh, 2m de 2k h bar squared so the twos cancel The two cancel. You have now MDE over h bar squared, and we can plug the value of k instead of instead of k here, and that's a square root of two m e over h bar squared. So then, if you take care of this h bar squared bit here, you will have m de over h bar square root of 2me so and then finally g of k dk is uh, yeah, it was b k square root over pi square root dk and we plug the number for uh, the value of decay and uh, decay. Let's put on the other screen. So we have v times the k square will be 2me over h bar square pi square. times the derivative m d e over h bar no squared h bar square root of two m e then you can uh, simplify this further and we we should be getting hmm, um, 
and b square root of 2me divided by pi squared average bar cubed de. And the density of state is also useful to express per unit of volume because now we have this V here, which is um, just depends on how big sample you are taking, basically. So the density of states per unit volume then is M square root of um, 2ME pi squared H bar Q DE. This is a this is a density of states in a three dimensional case, and as you can see, it is a, it is a, a square root dependence. Um, quite a nice result. So, if we plot, if we plot, so the energy here and here is dense density of states, we will have something like a square root dependence. Density of states grows with energy.